Um, so let's call the meeting to order at 6.04. Okay, uh, is there any adjustments to the agenda? Just we would move eight up uh, under after 7.2. Okay, uh, great. We are going to move, uh, yeah, to 7.2 or whenever our um, yeah, Jamie well, has to leave. And then <laughs> The sale of the Rochester High School update that 7.5. Yeah. Um, I, I just table that until I can come back to report out. Okay. On that. Okay, great. We'll do that when I come back from Granville Hancock. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, okay. So the consent agenda. Uh, Looking to approve the minutes of Monday, January 8th. So move. All second. All in favor? Yeah, Aye. Yeah, yeah. Aye. Patrick? Aye. Okay, Sorry. that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but like I said, just because we have so few numbers, we have to make sure we get everybody's voice in there. Okay, so we're looking for a motion to approve the minutes from Saturday, January 20th, our uh, special board retreat. So move. Second. Amy move. Bill moved. Amy seconded. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. Awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love it. Okay, great. Um, we're moving on to public comment then. Do we have any pu public comment? Um, looks like Keith is the only public on. I don't know if you have a comment at this time you wanted to bring forth. Okay, wonderful, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so let's move on to board comment. All right, hearing none, we'll move on to reports to the board. Uh, Superintendent, legislative update. Um, so it, it, you know, the this session continues to be a whirlwind in regards to Act 127. Um, I fully expect that there the legislature is actually going to act um, and revise Act 127 to send a new version of it to the governor uh, wow. for signature sometime in the next two weeks is what we're hearing. Wow. Um, and so what does that mean? What I, This is all based on information I'm gathering from testimony occurring at the House Ways and Means Committee, right? And the House and Senate um, Ways and Means Committee chairs, okay? Um, there's not been a approved revision to 127 yet that's actually gone um, and been taken action on to then, you know, go over a crossover to then have another, you know, the House take action and then send it to Senate. I expect all that to happen. I think we're going to see language coming out possibly tomorrow. That's what we were told on Thursday um, at the Vermont Superintendents Association meeting. Um, and then I was able to, to catch uh, some of the conversation that was happening in Ways and Means on Thursday and Friday. So, you know, what at this point in time I have for information is what I sent to the full board for updates. And so what they're discussing is, is repealing the provision of Act 127 that provided a 5% tax cap on the equalized tax rate for districts if you stayed under that 10% ceiling. Mm -hmm. So everything we've been talking about in regards to that would be repealed off 127. Um, and then there was some talk at the committee level about providing some tax relief for districts that <clears throat> lost essentially capacity due to 127 um, in the sense of tax breaks. Much think of a little bit more like what those merger tax incentives look like, like eight cents off, six cents off, mm. and they talked about th that those would be phased in at different levels based on each district and how much tax capacity they may have lost due to Act 127. 
Um, you know, in the initial projections of 127, this was a district that was supposed to gain some capacity with added pupils, so I don't think we're going to see anything in that regards. Okay. Um, what I do suspect we'll see that if the if a new uh, version of 127 comes out, um, that we would see the yield rebound a little bit, I mean, increase mm. from what they were discussing um, in January. And, you know, the hope would be that it would lease increase back to the December 1 tax letter at that 9400 and change, which is about four cents difference between the December 1 tax letter and the January uh, figure that they provided us okay. out of House Ways and Mean. Um, what you have tonight in your uh, tax sheet that we provided you is still that 9,100 and change number, okay? Because right. we haven't been provided a different number yet. Um, and then uh, as far as um, the other provisions of 127, which wouldn't affect us per se as much unless this thing continues to move like it has been the last month, um, is the ability for boards to delay their annual meetings. Um, oh, okay. And frankly, we will have at least one district in the supervisory union where we're going to need to do that because what you know, what they were operating under was the the law that we currently have, and they were a district that lost tax capacity, so they were operating under the ten percent per pupil ceiling and five percent cap. Um, you know what you'll see tonight when we come to your budget is that you know we have two tax sheets here for you tonight. One. Um, that shows you what your tax rate would be, uh, one, if 127 remained the same, which we don't expect it to, right, with the 5% cap, um, and no revenue added as far as your surplus funds, mm -hmm. and then another version that shows you if you were to utilize all your surplus funds to buy down the tax rate. Um, you know, when we get into that budget process, one of the things that I would – that I think the board might want to consider is how do we come create a budget with while utilizing some surplus money to um, buy down the tax rate sum to get to an equalized tax rate of zero, um, and then that the only change for your tax rate here locally would be due to the significant decrease in the common level of appraisal that we've right. seen which in both of your control. towns, which is out of our control. So. I think we'll talk about that further when we get yeah. to the budget, but just wanted to let you know it's, um, yeah, it's, 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 I, I would not, it's a good thing I'm not a betting uh, man because I would not have bet even two months ago that the legislature would take action on 127 for this year. So, yeah, I mean, all, I mean, all of our districts, uh -huh. our budgets are worn and they've gone to print, right? So everything right. that I have out there for four of our districts won't be accurate based on if they change the law. Wow. Um, so just know that's what's certainly taking up my and Tara's time right now is trying to navigate. Yeah, absolutely. That. I, and that we're lucky that we sit in a position that we vote later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. so hopefully we can dial this in. I think, you know, tonight we're going to look for the board to give us some more direction. You know, my sense is we'll come to you with a final draft in March. And then we'll need a special meeting in March to actually take action on your budget. Okay. I don't think you know, so we're going to want to bite that off the next meeting. Absolutely. Uh, you feel that within the next two weeks we should get some type of update? Gonna, yeah, I mean, we're going to have to, right? Yeah, okay. Because then we're looking at, yeah. um, by law right now, having to bring budgets forth to voters and okay. hold informational meetings with information that I have, which is current law. So yeah. if they're going to change 127 for this year... They need to get to work on this ASAP okay. and get the uh, governor's signature on it because it, it just the impacts of other, you know, 90% of districts in the state are voting right. at town meeting the for right, the night yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Wow, right. Okay, well, good. We look forward to hearing that. Bill. Yeah, question. Um, two questions. Is there anybody that um, is advocating uh, keeping Act 127 as it is and what? what what constituency or constituencies do they represent? The second question is, do you have any idea of where uh, Governor Scott may be relative to um, signing um, the revisions to Act 127 or vetoing? 
Mm -hmm. uh, so one, yeah, I think there's multiple superintendents and board members during testimony uh, when they took testimony from school boards and superintendents spoke to changing the law now for this current fiscal year would create uh, a lot of havoc on school district budgets. And, but they and weren't against changing it. It was a question of havoc. I think we've recognized that it needed to be changed yeah. okay. in order for, for the Ed Fund to, to you know, generate enough revenue and for it to make sense, right? So it's the timing. The timing was really concerning to folks. Thank you. Mm. Um, I fully expect that the governor would sign a piece of legislation, is my sense. Um, you know, he, he has been saying since December that he thinks school district budgets are too high. Um, and certainly, I think there's a sentiment in Montpelier that some school district budgets, that they were not, that cuts were not looked at as deep as they could have been due to this provision of a 5% cap and 10% ceiling, right? And so if, if the sentiment is that it's too high, I think any piece of legislation that would then require districts to relook at spending is something that he'd support. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being out there in the arena, yeah, making, absolutely. making a difference along with the superintendents. Uh, and I, I like to thank the Vermont School Board Association uh, leadership as well. The only other thing real quick, and I know I'm running way over on time, um, is there is a bill right now that's been introduced. I don't necessarily think it's gonna go anywhere, but that would require school districts to essentially provide a pathway of education that um, resulted in students not having any um, exposure to technology in school. Um, so they stu parents could opt out of students accessing any type of Google Classroom oh. project projected like presentations, things of that nature. Is that S three hundred four? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And wow, explain this because my my head is about ready to explode. Well, I, I mean, it's been introduced. It's it's got a few sponsors. You know, I'll I would say. What are they aiming at? I mean, it it's to provide, it, there's a concern about that there's too much use of technology educationally in schools. Um, and I think that that you know, could be a relevant concern. I would say the idea that schools are going to be able to create a whole pathway that results in students not be, having any access to technology within the classroom setting would mean that we're providing a whole nother instructional um, pathway mm -hmm. <laughs> within our school system, which I would just say would cost money, um, right? And right. so, you know, that that bill there, when we're talking about ed spending being too high and and that we need to tighten up on it, um, that bill would run contrary to that. Right. So I just mention it just so you can say, oh, Jamie had, a, okay. what's this? Jamie didn't mention it. I'm mentioning it so you hear about it. It's not something that I think has picked up any steam at this point, but I just wanted you to know it's out there. Appreciate that. Okay, is there anything else uh, for the superintendent? Let's update. Okay, we'll move on to the business Thank manager. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. So you all have my report. It outlines what's happening in the business office during the month of February outside of redoing budgets and preparing for annual meetings and getting the mailers out. Um, so I can answer any questions if there are any. Otherwise, uh, the budget and the audit are later on in your agenda. Okay, is there any questions for Tara in regards to her report? Not here. Okay, great. Well, let's move on to the policy committee update. Patrick, is it easier for you if I do that? Patrick was there, but... <laughs> if you don't mind. I no, that's fine. Baby yeah, you're good. Um, so the policy committee is currently reviewing two policies, and we had our legal counsel join us at our last meeting. One is our policy um, specific to uh, employee harassment um, and drafting a policy around that. And then the other, we have a policy, but revising that policy. Um, and then also, uh, we're looking at revisions to the, oh, 
Yep. There you go. <laughs> to the um, alcohol and, and substance um, abuse policy in regards to employees at work. Um, and so what we're looking f at that is, is that that may actually be crafted in a fitness for duty policy um, mm -hmm. that encompasses um, substances, you know, illegal substances, um, alcohol, but also in the event that we had an employee who was actually prescribed substances that also could be impeding their ability mm -hmm. to perform at work, um, that would develop policy around how we would handle that. And so that's a policy that's currently being worked on by legal counsel too. So there'll be some pretty significant revisions actually to both of those policies. So you'll see it for a reading and we won't take action on those two until a second round. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the uh, FY25 budget draft five. You want to take the yeah, sure. So, um, what you see in your expenditure portion of the budget, we did um, <clears throat> add back in two major things. One, we put in funds for some sort of residency with world language. Okay. Um, so you will see that on page and skip. You should see that on page. It's not in there. Oh, that part got missed. Sorry about that. Sorry. The plan was to add that. The plan was for it to be added, so we'll get that. So that added. will get added. Um, and then we also added funds back in um, to fuel the high school building for next year, which will make more sense with the high school sale update. Okay. It's Lindy. Yeah. The increase in oh, that's the what we did. The contract is actually under your section. So right. It's Thank you. I forgot about that. I was like, it's in there. I know. We got We did it. Well, we talked about where to put it. That's why. Where was it? Where is it? It's under Office of the Principal, and it's under. Do, 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 do. Um, it's going to be on page six. So if you flip over, oh, it's six. under. Um, you see it. Three twenty-one. Contract instructional services. Okay. Yes. And that number was based off of us looking at what if we've spent across other districts for some artists and residents opportunities that yeah. we've provided. Okay. Yeah, and so the high school feel is what we're essentially what we're currently carrying pretty much right now, which is a part of the funding to mm -hmm. to you know, heat the high school. And, you know, when we talk later about the sale of the high school, um, I'm gonna propose to the board, the, uh, well, one, give an update in regards to where we are about a vote this spring um, for the town of Rochester to acquire it, but then also um, propose that we move forward with a purchase and sale with the town in regards to doing that, being that if it's an affirm vote, Mm -hmm. that um, the purchase and sale has already been worked out so that the voters know what they're actually voting on in regards to that purchase and sale. And one of the things that um, the select board had requested is is that they the purchase and sale would result in, when there's a positive vote this spring, they acquire the building officially July 1, 2025. Okay, and so we'll talk about that more under that item, but currently right now there's that placeholder for partial coverage of heating the high school. Okay. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, what I would say to the board is, you know, our expenditure budget's at 4%, and, you know, I, I gotta give kudos to Lindy in regards to working on this budget that, mm -hmm. you know, this is, I don't have any other expenditure budgets at that point. Um, and so in regards to the expenditure level, to the board as we start to talk about your tax rate i would say to you know you know things that you could you know consider at that point of what would you be removing in regards to getting your tax rate down on the expenditure side you're going to affect programming yeah mm -hmm. and i think as a board we have decided that we do do not want to remove programming because we're our school is going in such a great direction our kids are Absolutely. learning our kids are improving Oh, and HF be able to fund that. One of the good, uh, as we turn to your revenue section, 
We're not budgeting um, yet for this thing that I'm actually incredibly excited about in regards to um, when we think about increased revenue and our work to attract more students is that um, we have for the past year had a partnership with VTVLC to offer our high school as a designated school for school choice districts that if they want their child to pursue their entire educational pathway at the high school level mm -hmm. via virtual learning through VTVLC that our high school then is the, the district that the student is actually registered with. Okay. And so those school choice districts pay tuition to us just like any other student. We monitor the student um, with, you know, as a supportive figure for VTVLC, but VTVLC has their own full, fully staffed teaching staff for this type of programming, their own principals, um, actually like their own head of school that yeah. operates kind of oh, like wow. a superintendent now. Um, and we are there essentially to say to those families, do you want to participate in extracurricular activities, right? Like, hey, we're offering this great thing on, you know, on a Saturday in regards to, you know, like National Honor Society at our high school just put on a really nice event where we had a meal and family skating and things. So those families are invited to that. Most of them are too far away to actually join. When you think about how many schools, op how many districts in the state actually are full, are, are choice, um, it starts to dwindle more and more as you get down to the elementary level. But they've approached us about um, being a host uh, supervisory union, uh, K through 12 on this. Mm. And so due to the fact that Pittsfield, Granville, and Hancock, um, Board of Your District, are in our complete choice, I think it makes a ton of sense for Rochester Stockbridge to be the district designated for the elementary. Nice. Um, and they're, they're saying to us right now that they suspect that there'll be seven students who would enroll at our SUD. Yep. Um, and Lindy and the school counselor will work with VTVLC to just support those families. We do act as the LEA mm -hmm. um, in regards to like joining meetings if there was a support team meeting or something of that nature. But we could be looking at an, another additional seven students into that tuition pool, okay? Okay. So I, I'm mentioning that to say we're budgeting right now at 19 students at your uh, announced rate for next year. Mm -hmm. um, it's very likely that will increase by another seven, nice. um, which is a good chunk of change because I yes, think you set your, um, your announced tuition at 17,000 and change. So, yeah. um, so that would be good. So there could be some increased revenue there the next time you see this draft. Great, that's exciting. And I exciting. wanted you to know where that would be coming from, and that's that's one of the areas that would be coming from. That sounds like a really a neat program, and it's nice that we could offer some extra support for that. Absolutely. Fantastic, that's what we need. Um, any questions about those two things before we go to the tax sheets? No. Any questions on before we go to the tax sheet? The revenues or the expenditure budget? Oh, I guess. The revenue seemed to, from our last budget, this one, um, our projected revenue for fiscal year 25 seemed to go down. Is that? The total revenue, you mean? Yeah, the, the, total, the total revenue that I'm seeing. It under always has revenue. to go down. It has to match the local revenue or your overall revenue? I just have it on the tax sheet as offsetting revenue. Oh, yeah, your less, your offsetting revenue. So Tara, that we didn't touch that at all. When your budget goes oh, down, uh, you know, no, 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 no. We were carrying. No, we were carrying in your last draft bill a fifty thousand dollar placeholder. Right. For local revenue, okay. and then this up at the top. Okay. And so that's why you're seeing it down in this. You have two tax sheets though. Yeah. In yes. your packet, one's going to yeah. show you not using any of your surplus for local yeah. revenue. And one's going to show you sheet. one of, and then one's going to show you if you use it all. So if you were to use any local revenues at the top of the page, Bill, yeah, it'll say that number will change based on what you decide to use. The balance of carryover from prior years. 
So sure. your last sure. draft had a fifty thousand dollar placeholder. We removed it. In oh, the second. okay. Are you following yeah. what I'm saying? Yes, I am. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so, what changes is the the um, uh, education spending revenue? Does that change? The Act 68. Yes. Act when you reduce your local spending, it increases your Act 68 education spending total. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Tara, do you want to walk them through the tax sheet? So the first tax sheet is like Jamie just said, we the changes that were made on the expenditure budget, removing the fifty thousand dollars from the balance carryover prior year, use the yield of nine thousand one hundred and seventy one, and then um, provided what it would look like at both current and then using the five percent cap. Which so I would, I would just I would waste your time looking at the cap figures now, right? Because I don't expect them to be in place. Okay. Right. So if you were not to use any surplus and move forward with the expenditure budget as is, you would be looking at an equalized residential tax rate of 1.4043, which is an increase of 8.68 cents over your fiscal year 24 equalized tax rate of 1.3175 or 6.59%. Okay. So the second tax sheet that I provided That's is if you were to use 375,000 of your unassigned fund balance from your audit as an offsetting revenue. And what that would look like if you put all of that money towards it. Now, remind you, we don't recommend that because it sets you up for a revenue shortfall in the next fiscal year if you don't carry those types of surpluses. But wanting to see what it would look like, it would drop your equalized tax rate down to 1.2809 or a reduction of 3.67 cents. Right. So a range determining you know what you all want to do and what happens like the range of using no surplus versus using all of your surplus. So that would be, you know, the next question of where we would need to go. So I do all like the idea of using um, some of our surplus to the taxpayers have already paid it. Um, and I think that, you know, we were able to find efficiencies in our budget last year and I think we should um, return some of that to the taxpayers, basically. I do think we need to, um, it is important to fund our um, our tuition fund because we, we if we get a, student, a tuition student, we don't have the funds for it. We, we are, we're, we're budgeting, budgeting right. for exactly the number of students we have. Yeah. So if somebody moves in uh, who's a high schooler, you know, we need to pay for that tuition. Um, so I kind of, I, I feel like we should do both. I, I do like the idea of um, pu putting as much of our fund balance back into the budget to make our budget a, a net zero, that there's no increase, that we are not increasing the, the budget at all. We're flatting, flatlining it. I'm not sure what the- At the equalized tax rate At level. the equalized tax rate. I'm not sure what the proper lingo for that is. Um, and then, unfortunately, you know, the CLA is just out of our control. Um, there's nothing we can do about it. But um, this way, we do get funds into a reserve fund, um, but we do also give money back to the um, taxpayers. Um, and hopefully, the yield will change, and that would can only help us. Yes. Um, but at this point, we don't know. Um, Tara, do you want to stay here and I'll go to Jihad or, or you want to go to Jihad? I will go to Jihad and you can just let me know what you want okay. in the next round. That works. Okay. And I'll join you shortly. Great. Um, well, let's, what, what is um, the other board members' um, thoughts on what I just proposed? Oh. Bill. Yeah, I like your approach. Um, and that we uh, share some of it for the taxpayers, absolutely. But at the same time, we need to um, 
prudently boost up our capital reserve fund. Um, we've got two beautiful schools, and we've got like $181,000 in reserve. I mean, that's that gives us very little opportunity to do what we need to do that costs any sort of money. So to the extent that we can use some of that surplus monies to reduce the impact, also uh, the rest of it go to that capital fund and boost that up. Um, the end result, I like it, that I think, depending on the yield number, um, we could be in a position to, to help the taxpayer boost up our capital fund and basically hold our uh, equalized education tax before the CLA mm -hmm. to a zero increase, or very, very close to that. Um, that would be remarkable. And it would also help us um, explain to the taxpayers that we've done everything we can and responsibly. And um, the CLA is something that uh, is going to have to be done by powers beyond our control. So I like that. I don't think we need to take any action tonight. Uh, I agree. I think with the swing in everything, we shouldn't. But um, if, if all the board members can give Jamie the, t the direction that we um, want to go in, I think it would be good. I, yes. As I said earlier, um, I don't want to cut any more out of our expenditure budget. I don't want to cut any programming in our schools. Um, so I would like to try to make it work in a different way. Um, JC or Patrick, do you have any uh, comments on uh, what this uh, this idea? I agree with both of you. I think that's a logical path forward. Great, yeah, thank me you. Me too, and I especially agree with not cutting any programming. Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good idea. Okay. Great. I concur. <laughs> good. Does that give you uh, the yep. direction you're looking for? Yep. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, so what you'll see is, is um, we'll adjust how much we're using of carryover revenue um, based off of two factors really remaining for us. One, are we able to secure some added tuition students? Because if that increases, that's less you're going to have to use. Yep. And then two, if the yield jumps back up four cents, meaning back to that 9,500 figure, yep. that's less that we'll have to use too. Great. Uh, and remember, a penny for you is 30,000. So four cents, you know, that's $120,000 of surplus funds you wouldn't have to use, mm -hmm. use if they up the yield. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, which is huge. So, but I, w that, so that's the budget we'll bring to you. Great. Am I making sense? Absolutely. That we're at that equalized tax rate of zero. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, are you gonna hop over to? Uh... Yeah, and maybe what we do is um, just also table the audit. Until Absolutely. <laughs> I can't do anything with that yeah. without Tara. Thank you. But there was no findings, which is really good news. So. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay, great. Well, then we'll get to the good part of the meeting, which is the celebration of learning. <laughs> Well, well, sorry. <laughs> thank you very much um, for even being interested and wanting to know what's going on. So I'm yeah. honored, of course, to be here. And I've shared a little bit of a presentation here so people who are virtual can see and then you guys can see too. And uh, so I've based my outdoor education program on a book. The book is called Coyote's Guide to Connecting with Nature. And it's by John Young, Ellen Hawes, and Evan McGowan. And it's based on John Muir's outdoor education attitude, which is that nature is what's, what's teaching us. Nature gives us the opportunity. So, of course, it builds resilience, which is something we all really need right now. It just seems like we've been at this pace of high energy trying to survive the pandemic and now we're in an endemic but the resilience piece is so important and and being outdoors no matter the temperature no matter the weather um, really does give kids that opportunity uh, we start out every class with three deep breaths uh, and so and i base that on the research that proves that it regulates the body even just putting your feet on the ground or sitting on the ground and breathing three times deep in and out and practice breathing like that. And kids have told me that sometimes they do that 
when they're in school, when they're frustrated mm -hmm. or annoyed or feeling stress, and they realize just breathing three times is really good. And so the philosophy is that outdoor education provides opportunities to develop positive relationships with the environment, others and ourselves through interna interaction with the natural world. These relationships are essential for the well-being and sustainability of individuals, society, and our world. And as I mentioned earlier, nature is the true teacher. So I just sort of guide. But what I've noticed in my being outside, I could be outside for four different classes, and every single time the experience is different due to the ages of the kids, but also due to the weather. I mean, it changes in Vermont very quickly. So, so it's teaching us constantly. And so I listed here just the, the materials that I'm using to teach them the mindfulness. The harvested herbs, which I've started a tea garden. I have a little bit here in Rochester, a little bit in Stockbridge, a lot of things that I have in my own house. And the tea is made from the herbs that I'm harvesting. I, in fact, put an ad out on our Front Porch Forum to ask for some tea this fall so I didn't have to buy a lot from Amazon. I didn't really want to do that. And my mudroom, every day I'd come home and there'd be bags and bags of things that people had just delivered. So the tea is made from things that are local. Uh, the thermos, the cups, the kids, the teacher, the fresh air, and then the coyote's guide to learning, which is really the focus of this presentation tonight. And so uh, what I have here is the concepts are listed there on the right, beginning with common sense. Uh, basically, let's make choices that are safe based on what environment we're in. Um, dressing properly for the weather takes common sense. I'm still working on that with a couple of fourth, fifth, sixth graders who think today that it's okay to have your legs exposed while the wind is whipping down the valley, but they're not allowed to complain because you're the one that came out dressed like that, so that's how they're learning <laughs> common sense to dress properly. Self-sufficiency, you know, getting our things ready and working together to make sure that we have what we need for class. Aliveness and agility, awe and reverence, inquisitive focus, caring and tending, service to the community, and quiet mind. And uh, last year I did Quiet Mind in June, but this year I felt like we needed to start it now. And I had a student walk up to me today and say, that was my favorite part of class. I, I needed that. And it's basically three minutes of just nothing. No one, no one speaks, no one moves. They settle in around the truss. Some kids are lying on the snow, some are sitting on a log, some kids sit in a chair. But today we got to face the sun and soak up the vitamin D. And it just really feels good. It regulates the body. So, And I prepared a little video here, so I'll just get quiet while the video does the, the rest of the speaking.
Any questions? Very nice. Thank you. Questions about any of the things you've seen? Anyone online too? I'm here and ready. <laughs> yes, Bill. Yeah, I think you're, uh, it's not only inspirational, but it's also, when it, we, we dig deep into about how we learn and what we love and what we hold passionate um, and what we see, um, your curriculum uh, and the connection with nature is just, um, you wonder why that isn't a core curriculum for, for all, uh, certainly elementary schools, but I must say it's what you're dealing with and you're sharing is valuable to, I don't, for all kids, no matter what their age is. Um, so we're, we're really blessed here in Rochester Stockbridge to have you in this curriculum. I, I would love to see that um, spread um, or strengthen to other educational communities across Vermont or this country um, that could absolutely use that. The, the whole concept of, quote, doing nothing, you're doing so much by not doing nothing. And to be able to feel free to, quote, do nothing is, is, a, is an art that we all need to learn. We're so busy worrying, planning, regretting. Um, what's the next thing that we're not right now taking in what's going on. So I just uh, commend what you're doing. I really enjoy it. Um, and John Muir is certainly, um, uh, along with Teddy Roosevelt, proud of <laughs> Thank Reason you. we still have nature, those guys, right? Yes. Well, thank you, Bill. I, uh, today with the kids discussed the quiet mind as um, a snow globe where, you know, when you're in class, you know, math is coming at you and then literacy is coming at you and then you have other things, lunchtime and all these. And so your thoughts are just sort of going all over the place. And mm -hmm. so the quiet mind piece is set the snow globe down and let it settle because the thoughts have to settle. And we also talked about how you learn how to ride the bike or you learn how to swim when you're sleeping at night after you've taken the lesson. So I think that that time of just doing nothing is so valuable for the learning that's happening in the building as well mm -hmm. so that they have a chance to assimilate it into their brains yep. so yeah yep. well thank absolutely. you absolutely wonderful yeah i'm psyched i'm honored i love it i would love to spread it to as many people as i could um the other piece that i think um in this building that's happened lately is the kids are using the tea corner so as you walked past to come to the library there's tea over there yeah and the kids are helping themselves to tea and you know they're reading a book and drinking a cup of tea which <laughs> It's herbal tea. None of it has caffeine. It's not bad for them. It's actually yeah. really good for them. And as long as they stay safe, which is one of our outdoor rules is to stay safe, yeah. you know, when pouring the tea, it's, it's a very good thing, I think, just that's, for their bodies. So that's neat. Yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, it's so interesting to see the key concepts of the curriculum that's going on at, in outdoor ed, because a lot of them I can see um, being e so easily applied to, you know, the academic setting. I think mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Um, some of the skills, you know, learned outside can kind of help um, integrate a certain type of focus and relaxation and problem solving skills in, mm -hmm. you know, inside as well. Um, so I think it's really cool. I, I didn't know the specifics of the curriculum. And secondly, Amy, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about your assessment of mm. outdoor ed, because yours is a little bit different than the report card for regular ed. It is. I, I developed it based on the Coyotes Guide, so I am actually grading these concepts. So, so far this year, it's been common sense, self-sufficiency, aliveness and agility, and now we're in quiet mind. And so um, one of the things I'm doing is each class has a satchel and they have earned different colored rocks that go with each concept. So for example, um, today somebody left their hat after class, after a teacher had said, grab everything, you know, they left the hat on the ground. And so then I went back into the classroom and I brought the hat and I said, I think I found a hat. Now, what do you owe me? And so they had to give me back the self-sufficiency rock 
Uh, and then they have to go three days in a row of remembering right everything <laughs> to earn it back. So it's kind of like a tangible way to yeah. keep track of these concepts. Absolutely. And, yeah, so it, it's just a, I don't know, I, I sort of think these kids are really into Harry Potter and magic schools and things like that. So if I can use those ideas of here's this rock, I spray painted it. I mean, it's just a spray painted <laughs> rock. Don't tell but, your secrets. Right. A green rock stands for common sense and they know that. And they also know that if somebody says it's cold, I take the rock back. You can't complain. You got to come out here dressed. And if you don't come out here dressed, you don't have common sense. You need to be dressed properly for the weather. So that's one of the ways I'm doing it in a tangible sort of a way. Thank you. Sure. It's really neat. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. I love it. Like I said, I'm honored. I would love to spread the word with as many people. I think the kids need to tune into the natural world. They just need to. Absolutely. And and I think um, it'll make a difference in the future whether they care about the environment or not, or understand the environment or not, is if they've actually connected with it. Right. So yeah. There's no way to teach that inside a building. Just found a way it. to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the support. Yes. Almighty mm -hmm. board for Absolutely. allowing it to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Amy, I have another question, another question for, you. for you. Sure. Is there anything, there anything you feel like you, you need, need or, or you would like, like to work, to work toward, toward or you need our support our for work. anything in what you're doing? That's a great question. I, I think I've figured out how to move things around in snow. Um, that was a big challenge. I mean, this morning I, out the south door, I pushed the sled and it's been pretty easy. And then today I wasn't really thinking and using my common sense, but it went really fast and then tipped over. So I had to make more tea. But then I shared the story with the kids and I said, why do you, but you know, that sort of thing. So um, I was thinking I needed a different way of moving things, but I think now I've figured it out. Um, I've also figured out how to get kids to help me bring things back to the building, which is helpful. Um, if I run into a, a low amount of tea, I will reach out to Lindy and just let her know. Um, because those bags of mint that all the neighbors have donated is starting to wear thin a little bit. But today I made ginger and lemon, and I just bought the lemons and ginger myself. So I'm happy to, you know, to make these things for these kids. They, they definitely need it. So I will reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for all the work that you've done. This I'm, is incredible. I love, I love it. Yeah. Thanks. Now back to business. <laughs> but again, thank you for caring because this is why we're here. It's for the kids, right? We're here for the kids and for the families, and that's why. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you guys keep up the good work, too. Hey, thank you. <laughs> it's hard work. It is. Okay, so we um, are going to table um, the audit. Um, probably the preparation for the annual meeting and mailer as well, or do you have? It depends if, I mean, it doesn't really need to be tabled that okay, we can that, do without them. Uh, sure, okay, so let's go on to 7.3, preparation for annual meeting and mailer. So I guess the first question around that is, are you looking to use the same format we've been using the past couple of years? Like, Obviously, right. we're not at the point of creating it all just yet, and some of it we reuse because it's factual. Yeah. The definitions don't change, things don't change. We don't have a warning yet, so we can't create those things. But what um, things, if any, I think that's kind of the lens we need to start with, right? Like what things, if any, are we looking to update or change to it? Because that's more of time. Formatting seems to take so much time. <laughs> right, okay. Um, now, I actually have not seen other school districts um, mailers to know if we are, if there's a, we're all in line or if. So that would be a Tara question. We're the only one that does our own. I think Tara has a pretty blanket one that she uses formatting wise. I don't think there's quite as much information in others. Um, we can get her to confirm that. But okay. Yeah, and by reducing some of our information, we could probably reduce some pages and some costs then. Right. Um, so I think it's more looking at that lens okay. for it because we will have to start to put it together by the end of March to get What's it the to the printer. Um, our vote, I got to look at it. Roughly. Yeah. End of March, we have, we have two months? Uh, yep, usually what's happened is we have like this 
in service day where teachers have done parent teacher conferences so that's kind of how we spend like the 29th is usually when we send it to the printer by um, march 29th yep to make sure that we have time to get a proof back yep um which should be plenty of time because the first tuesday in may is not till the 7th so like we have that extra okay. half a week that we didn't have last year <laughs> and is this something you're the team leader for or is it also with central office and things like that how does it work uh the past couple of years have been myself and erica okay. whereas i think other districts utilize tara so i think it's a difference in formatting right at this point right and i mean erica's that puts... got the format but right well i know um I know why we went that way because mm -hmm. uh, we were, it got to a point where our the office was not doing it. I think there right. was maybe a, just a miscommunication or there was just changeover in the right. office. So um, it ended up very late uh, us trying to scramble one together right. is one what year. happened. I remember that too. Um, and then also uh, we really there was a lot of information that we wanted to get out to our um, voters that other districts didn't necessarily put in right um and i think that like you're saying is something we probably should take a look at and see do we need that much extra work uh extra reporting right. out um also um how much work does it burden you and your staff by us having you do um create right. i'm sure it's quite a, 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 a amount of time it the more that's in there is the more more right. of it more time so i think it's the lens of like is everything in that mailer that we sent out last year i think there's great things in there and then the question is are there things that now we've put out there enough that maybe we don't like that we can pull back right pull no. back a little bit um okay i also think it's probably good to look at other districts i would like to look at other i see and we yeah. can uh, i think they're digitally on the website under each school board yeah, I, um, I guess I'll, I'll ask um, uh, Jamie if I could have a copy yeah. from, because I know that in Central Office, yeah. office they keep some copies because I'm a paper person. I get it. So mm -hmm. um, it's just easier to read. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing about this, you know, things that seem helpful is the spending chart, right, that shows, like, how much of it's tuition, how much is salaries, that pot. I think it's a pot in there somewhere right now. Um, I think like that this poppy, I think student population data is something that mm -hmm. um, is helpful. It, it's helpful that they, they want. Um, yeah. And then there's certain things that by law that have, have to, to be in there, here, right? right? The warning, the minutes from last year's annual meeting, that has to be there, that sheet that you're looking at. Has yeah, the three-year comparison yeah. and then the estimated tax rate. Yeah, here's our budget at a glance. Um, I think our ta our taxpayers re really like seeing so us. Too. There was a lot of good compliments last yeah. year when this book came out. Everybody really, I got very positive feedback on it. Yeah, I think every year we clean it. Clean, clean it up, up a little, little cause, bit more. Because it is yeah. less than it was the year before. Yes, it is. Um, so those, that's kind of the lens that we need to start okay. looking for. And if we have that feedback for March, then that gives us okay. time. That would be great. If we could all take a look at um, this, the, our last year's budget book, and maybe um, you know, if you have an opportunity to look at uh, other um, districts, um, books mm -hmm. just to um, yeah. be able to give Lindy some guidance here if uh, it's something we can pass off to the SU office. I don't know if we can with with our formatting and just say you know follow along with the right. I can ask this yeah, formatting. I, I would be Erica is my tech. Guru yes. Okay. On that, I'm not gonna lie and pretend it's me because it's not by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if she puts her her uh, copy editor stuff to good work when she does that so okay yeah yeah so you want feedback i think you just have to make you to lindy or to lindy cc about our suggestions about adding a subtraction by our meeting in march or how, yeah i think how we, we can just bring this? it bring that to the meeting just bring it to bring the it meeting, meeting and then mark. it'll okay. allow us to make a decision yes where it goes from there two things that uh, strike me one was last year we took a lot of flack because of the confusion of having the, uh, the election of board members by Australian ballot. Right. And the budget vote in person at our annual school meeting. 
Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of heartburn on that. So, and I think we as a board decided that without a, a town vote or all this sort of stuff, it wasn't up to us to change that. Well, what we can change, I think, and we should and must, is uh, uh, front and center, and I possibly think on the front page of this thing about so it is there. So it is on the front page here. <laughs> I mean, so, so maybe, that but it doesn't say, it says Australian ballot article 11 only, but it doesn't really tell you what article 11 is. So maybe uh, we need to say Australian ballot to vote um, for your board members, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah I think it would be clearer it um, uh, for, no. of nothing else for my generation to, uh, to understand that because it was too bad because they came some late yes. and they were frustrated and, um, we don't need that. Yeah, uh, so, so we need to communicate yeah. that out very yeah. uh, many times. In many yeah. ways as we In can. In many eat. ways. The other one is that if we look at the school board meeting, um, whether we, uh, this can get us thinking about um, what sort of um, visual yes, uh, charts and graphs that we might find and... Uh, and I know it, that, there, granted, it's probably all going to change for these other districts. <laughs> yeah, and the next, we're, we're there blessed that we don't it, that, that have that. I so, know that Tara um, has a revised working template. So. For the tax rates? For things like that, that to put up. Because we okay. have like a format. The one you worked off last year, there's a format to that. There well, is. I definitely, yeah. and I definitely want to, to report out our celebrations. And, yeah. you know, in an I, I believe, I mean, unfortunately, I wasn't at the meeting last year, but I think I heard somebody say, um, oh, I didn't know that that was happening. Right. You know, they, um, and I think that's important to. Agree. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and an effective way to do it. The other thing is that our academic accomplishments, talking kind of about celebration of learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, we did a little of that last, and my wife reported sitting behind this couple, and they were just gasped. They just couldn't believe how well the kids were learning and progressing, mm -hmm. um, and that we were not falling behind or below. We were um, yeah. one of the, uh, the leading uh, elementary school uh, campuses uh, leading the charge on that. So, I, uh, to me, that's a big offset or people going grumbling about, and I totally mm -hmm. sympathize with them, the percentage increase of their, on their tax bill, yeah. and quite honestly, the, um, the, 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 the uh, system for income sensitivity, they've changed that, so that's going to so take a spike. But so they, you got to say, OK, what are you getting for your dollar? Absolutely. What are our kids getting? What are our communities getting? Um, and so we really need to think about that and, and not only for the, the meeting, but also the possibility for the annual report. And I, uh, I'll give it some thought, but I, there's a lot there to celebrate. We yeah, just got to hone it down well, uh, it's so it's understandable. Right in the front of my letter, it's usually the first two paragraphs are all the celebrations plus on the slideshow. So yeah, um, I definitely think at the at the meeting. I which want is a where chart or so it, just to show, and uh, that we. There can, was one in there last, yeah. not in there, but it yeah. was at the yeah. meeting. So we're on the same wavelength. Yeah, it's yeah. all there already. Yeah. Patrick. You know, just thinking about some of this stuff, um, how how would you guys feel about having, like, I just feel like, you know, the celebration of learning that we're getting here, say, like, what just, what Amy just provided us, um, like, why couldn't we have, you know, some sort of video showing on a TV or something um, as people walk in for our budget meeting so they can kind of see what, what the kids That's a cool idea. Do we have a TV or a computer screen that, right, it could kind of just be a running slideshow or running, um, yeah, yeah a, um, audio, maybe a couple quick clips in there. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, I love that idea. And then our actual annual meeting will be in Stockbridge. Yes. So it'll be in the uh, uh, multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm. Okay. At seven o'clock on 
the first, first Tuesday, Tuesday in May. So that's May 7th. Okay. May 7th, yeah. yeah, May 7th. May 7th. I was thinking that um, we have time, uh, but we should, seems to me the letters to the editor, not everybody, and we've got social media, which I know nothing about, but if we could utilize both, and it seems to me it's logical we get a letter to the editor from the SU and Jamie. We get a letter to the editor from our board. Mm -hmm. um, we get a, a letter of support I'd love to see from um, uh, the teachers or the educational community here in our SUD, if that's possible, and a PTO. And they all could talk about different features about why it's just so valuable to support what's going on. Mm -hmm. and that um, what's happening is not only uh, working, um, but uh, you've got a commitment to um, be prudent at the same time and never forget the outcome for the, what's in the best interest for our kids and we have stuff to, to, to point with pride on. Um, and so it's just some of that's your yep. thing and, and some of this is us with, um, and then with Jamie, but I think and then if there's some way we can get that on social media, which is beyond me, but if we could just hitchhike some of those letters or those statements yeah, or those quotes or whatever you want to call it and hitchhike like front port, front, yeah. front porch forum, whatever so the case is. So and also right along with what you're saying, the end of Jamie's report, he says he's currently working with the, um, super, the SU um, admin team to create multiple opportunities for community engagements around our FY25 budget. So let's budgets. check with that. Yep, yeah. and uh, slide presentations, slideshows to assist during annual meetings and informational yep. meetings. So <clears throat> he, we will also have that. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so we'll come back uh, next yep. uh, meeting yeah. with clear direction to Lindy about what we'd like to see for the mailer. Yep. Um, see if we can maybe slim it down a little bit or, or if we want the SU to uh, uh, prepare it. Okay, uh, let's move on to the board mission statement, possible actions. Um, we have in our packet the three... Uh, mission statements that we made during our um, retreat um, and then we have a generated one that uh, which is, all three statements were put into a AI chat, chat GPT to see uh, what type of statement um, it was able to come up with um, and then Bill has also provided I uh, don't not sure if you you guys received it or not um a should, should have gone out i'm not sure everybody had a chance to look at it, it came out late yeah late today um has did, uh what are your some of your thoughts on uh on this mission statements <laughs> it's getting closer to read it um I thought the chat GBT one did a good job of um, pulling a lot of our stuff together. There was some wording that I would, I crossed out that I didn't think um, really represented us. Um, do you want to read the one that you presented, Bill? Well, sure. Um, yeah, I just... Um kept reading the three that were generated at our retreat and the two by AI, and I started to paste and glue, and I came up with four different versions, and then I finally just uh, tried to whittle it down and plagiarize as much as I could. So I, uh, what I'm gonna read to you, 90% is you, and uh, the other 10% is, is uh, 8% is AI, and. 2% is Bill Edgerton, but anyway, I've got this as a mission statement for draft, trying to combine everything that we considered. Mission statement, we are a vibrant educational community powered by a talented, committed, and accountable team. We ignite a passion for learning through a rigorous, individualized academic education, the arts, outdoor exploration, 
and diverse and unique experiential cultural learning opportunities. Our commitment is to empower every student with the skills and values needed to thrive in a rapidly changing world. Anyway, that's so. Very nice. Um, Very good job. I know it's kind of tough to discuss no. <laughs> over Zoom. Um, you know, it, it was nice being in our retreat and being able to to uh, collaborate together. But please comment and. No, I I like what Bill put together. Um, I feel like it it. it it kind of took the best of all and put it, put it together. And um, I think it's short, precise, and that's, that's what we need. You don't want to forget what the beginning said by the time you get to the end. <laughs> right. And also, I, you know, one of the things from our retreat is that we need it to be, um, you know, readable that a parent can read this and, and it makes sense and know know what that means when we're saying some of these words. Uh, J JC, do you have a, any comments on this statement or uh, the... I, um, I, I like Bill's synthesis. I question the rigorous... I don't know, like rigorous individualized academic education, like what that means. Like I, I just I pick, I can pick it apart and and go back and forth um, on a on a few different things. I'm just not sure. I haven't had enough time with with that one to to really give feedback, but I think it's mostly in the direction that we all were headed at a retreat. Um, is it long? Is it long? I mean, I kind of feel like it might be a little long. It's uh, 58 men, uh, 58 words. So my right. goal was 50 and I didn't quite make it. <laughs> um, we had some that were shorter and some were longer than that. Um, the, what yeah, I, I just wonder yeah. what other people think. Like, do you yeah. think it's long? Like when you listen to it or are you like, you know? No, but um, I think you know, I, if I go back to the to some of the other ones, um, what I feel is m missing is that we foster um, respect, responsibility, and empathy. Mm -hmm. right. um, I I've, I feel strongly about um, that is a um, one of our mission our missions to to teach these kids. Yeah, it's already like the motto kind of, you know, at the school, it's on the wall of the school and like those words, I think um, those should be in there. And I liked using the word empathy as well. Yeah, I think that's, it. yeah. I do really like the end talking about um, the skills and values needed for this rapidly changing world. You know, I think that is a really good statement. Well, I, I, um, maybe you... maybe we all could um, think about it um, and provide some sort of feedback individually in some way or or at the next meeting um, <coughs> or we just adopt it. You know, I don't know how to go, move forward other than having some more time to chew on this mission statement. Yeah, I, I agree. I think. I think that we're not quite ready to adopt no. anything tonight. I think there's some to. great stuff out here. Oh. Uh, we just want to tweak it around a little bit to make it fit us perfectly. Um, yeah. Can so. I suggest that uh, we don't have to do it tonight. My goal was to that, that we all stand behind this mission and believe in it. And one of the points in the book, there were, chapter three, was that some boards start every meeting with reading their mission statement. Mm. So. Uh, I don't say we have to do that, but this is this is an important step. It would be my recommendation and wish is that w we can do that in time to include the mission statement in our annual report. Okay. And have it as a slide at at the annual meeting. So we've got some time. My my suggestion is um, uh, you you got my shot at this. Send these uh, suggestions, additions, deletions, whatever it is, to Amy. And why don't you take a 
Okay. Um, you've you've got my shot, NC, uh, and, and Linda, you're all of this too, the same thing. And we come back with a revised draft. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it could be every single sentence. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm not taking any pride of authorship. I'm going to actually see if I can tap JC because uh, I, she was my partner working on this, and she had very good wording. Yep. Um, JC, are you willing to head up, like, uh, taking a look at um, getting some feedback from people and, and c coming up with another um, yeah. draft? Sure. Yeah, I think that's that was my idea to get the feedback anyway. So I think it would be good. I can I can work on that and then come back with a, another version that's yeah. influenced by the alphabet yeah. song. <laughs> that's okay. That's perfect. Um, yep. And so that's fine with me. And, and thank you, Bill, for getting this to us. Um, I had a. I always have a very busy day right before yeah. uh, my board meeting, so I don't have time to review any new stuff that's come out that day. Um, so if we could get it a little earlier, that would just help it. Let you sit on it for a little bit. Right. But we're also going to be sending suggestions. Yes. To J First, we're, yes, we're going to send suggestions okay. to JC. I meant yeah, one yeah. after she after right, we've so sent her suggestions and she's created another yeah. um, draft. If she's able to send it out earlier, that would just be helpful yeah, for me. That'd be cool. Awesome. Thank you, JC. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right. Okay, so we can, um, why don't we, we're going to table the um, sale of the um, Rochester High School for the update from Jamie. So, um, do I guess we'll go right down to the... Um, Did you want to do your book study? Book study. First. Yep, sure. The Essential School Board book, Better Governance in the Age of Accountability, Nancy Walser. And we're going to be diving into chapter three. And uh, chapter two. And we did like chapter two last time. Chapter I don't have three. My binder with me. <laughs> I read chapter two. No, because because uh, I totally understand that because uh, given your workload and everything else, you weren't able to read chapter two. And now you've done it, so you're now prepared. Okay, now I'm prepared. Can, I, I thought I missed chapter on one, because I thought we did, the, okay. Um, wow, sorry guys, really. <laughs> and this one is, um, I don't think as, as interesting possibly as uh, the, the prior chapters or the chapters to come, but it's, it's reassuring because it's the chapters about staying focused on achievement, meetings, setting goals, and using data. And uh, we, I think we've spent a great deal of time on each one of those topics. So I'd be surprised that any of us read stuff here that was totally foreign to what we're all about. We can yeah, still- pretty in line to me. I was like, oh, well, yep, yep. <laughs> it's pretty cool to read these books because it makes me feel like we're doing really great. I agree. It 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 um, because you do kind of wonder: Are we on the right path? Are are we doing what boards are supposed to be doing? Yeah, and I, it I that. it's reinforcing that we are. It's reassuring for sure. Um, I always ask if there's anything that uh, that you recall from this chapter that you found intriguing, important, or something that we need to reinforce or to to improve on and um, so I just toss that out that question out um, to get any of your comments at all on chapter three I was surprised that it seemed like their board meetings are really long <laughs> like extra long not that I, I don't want them any longer so I was like yeah but I was <laughs> I was just like, wow, that seems like a lot of time. Well, the, it's interesting because there's a section on the, they call it the engaged chair. Right here. And they had um, various bullets. Here we go. Um, the importance of the board chair's communication, vital for the effectiveness 
of the superintendent and the board. They were talking about the board chair as being kind of like a coach. You know, that feeling that um, uh, you listen and then you guide us uh, to be better than we possibly thought before we walked into the room. So uh, they talked about the chair's role as a coach. And then the agenda is carefully crafted by the chair and superintendent. And they suggest in a six months intervals, kind of that you kind of plan out your six months rough mm. uh, agendas and then you hammer it. We've got that teamwork, it's working. Um, this one, uh, meetings are kept to two hours or less in length. And uh, if any, one thing that Amy has been walking on water on, as far as I'm concerned, is keeping that down. We, that's controlling the agenda. That's close, uh, controlling uh, and, uh, somebody that's talking too much uh, or, and getting things done. Yeah, because um, once you get past that two-hour mark, you start to get unable to effectively do business. Yep, yep. And the last one was board packets are sent out at the latest by the Friday before the meeting. Now, we happen to be the earliest ones in the week, but religiously we get that information, so we have at least the weekend um, to look at it and come prepared. And we all know that if we're not prepared, then we're kind of passive, and our job is to be activated by our homework so that we can contribute to the and discussion. I think, and I believe that's one of our board goals, actually, is no surprises. That's correct. At the, and which is by preparing ahead of time and getting, letting people have time to know what's going to be in the meeting. Yep. Great. Yep. Um, I'm not going to go in great detail, but there's a, a, a type of board governance that came from the private sector. Uh, John Carver was the author, and he's made millions in the consulting business. It's called policy governance. I just want to let you know that um, there are several school board, district boards, supervisory boards in Vermont that follow that procedure. And in chapter three, the author kind of outlines those. I'm not suggesting at all that we change to that. Mm. Uh, I have questions about that. And I think what we're doing here is, is pretty darn robust and uh, responsive. So but I just wanted to point that out, that there's another kind of model for um, board governance. Um, the other thing was, I love the term about data. And they said, don't be a drip. <laughs> and I just kind of like that. Well, what does drip mean? Data rich, information poor. And I've, done, I've seen financial statements, which they'll give you 50 pages of numbers. But what's the bottom line? Where are we going? What's that compared to? Uh, what do we need to do? So, and the, we're going to be in a few minutes talking about uh, academic achievement again. And I think one thing um, our team has done very well, SU team, is to take that information and to make it understandable for us. Mm -hmm. And then one thing I've learned and reading this chapter again is important that it also not has to be understandable, but useful. Um, and uh, what's the term? Um, timely for the teachers so that they can take, learn from it and take action mm. on each individual student. That's what we're talking about, individualized learning. We've got to uh, track my progress. We've got a test, but it also provides that individualized feedback for the teacher, for Johnny and, and Martha and Billy, where they're, they're uh, uh, falling short, mm -hmm. and what specifically can be done about that? And in as Anna's or Lindy's report, uh, you'll see where the, the emphasis that you identified in the fall, right. um, the percentage changes were very high. Were dramatic, and part of that is the ability that we can measure and give feedback. Absolutely. Not only for us generally, but for the teachers to to be better teachers at it. So. Um, I think I've talked enough on this. Anything Excellent. else? Um, next chapter. Um, it's chapter four. four. March 4th. There you oh. go, March 4th, chapter four. March 4th, chapter four. Avoiding pitfalls. Okay, four. I, I'll, I'll read the right chapter this time. That's embarrassing. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. 
All right, let's move on to the principal's uh, winter academic data report. Yeah. First, you'll see my principal's report, just an update. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to add slash highlight is uh, this month we're going to have a combined PTO meeting, both Ooh. Rochester and Stockbridge, as they're planning a combined, combined bingo, bingo event, event for the, the spring. spring. <laughs> um, I, also I also wanted, wanted to invite everybody on February 16th in both buildings. buildings. And this, and this will go out this weekend, weekend for stakeholders. Pat and Justine, Justine which is why I have seen it. We're doing books and bagels for our Isle of Tree month. So you can, you can you have candy bagels, bagels here at your and then you have wild fern bagels, bagels at Stockbridge. Families, families and community, community members can come, come join and read with students, students and have a little breakfast. What time? 8 a.m. We're bright and early. On the 16th. On the 16th. You're more than welcome to join any place that works for you. Um. And then, and then thinking, thinking about <coughs> next. Is it this? Oh, this oh, is from Friday. Oh. Oh, I was like, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Um, no. Um, um, and then, then already thinking, thinking about, about next school year, preschool pre screening and registration will start in April. April. That and information is starting to go out. We are hosting two tumble time, time dates where families and kids, kids by the can come. Oh, nice. One, One date is in Rochester, I think it's the first Saturday, Saturday March, March, and then uh, the middle of March, March is one in Stockbridge as well. That's great. Good idea. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so those, those things, things are coming around. around. And the other thing that I'll highlight is Thursday of this week, uh, White River Valley Middle School, School is hosting a meet and greet and um, question and answer night for fifth and sixth grade families prior to the home basketball game. So some schools are choosing to have the open houses, like, like gone in the, the day, day of what I call college, college fair style, where everybody lines, lines up at the table. Okay. I think people have revised to do like an open house type model where they invite families to come. So, so other schools, schools have held different open houses, houses and White River Valley just opted to come in here. here. Great. So, so, um, so, so we'll take questions, questions on the principal's report, report and, then and then we can do, do the academic report. report. Is there, is there any, any questions, questions for Lindy on her principal's, principal's report? report? Sounds, Sounds like there's some great things happening. Thing. Yes, yes, it's, it's busy. busy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the three, three pages, pages of busy. busy. And it's wonderful. Yeah, yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Okay, okay if there's no questions, we'll move on to the um, academic report. Um, so, just to kind of on page one is like the overview. This reports form on a little differently than the way you're used to. Um, so, so just kind of explain, as a reminder, like percentile scores well below expected means the student scores in the first to 39th percentile. Below expected is 40th to 59th percentile. As a reminder, the national average meaning the standard or the expectation is the 50th percentile above. We set ours higher because that has a better correlation of what we can anticipate. Um, in student, student results, results in, in our statewide, statewide testing, testing which is, is now called ECAP, Vermont CAP. Um, um, and, and so, so then expected, expected is the 60th to 79th percentile, percentile, and above expected, expected is 80th to 99th percentile. And it, and it does, does kind of um, give you an overview of like 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 proficiency bands or where, where they, they are based on the scale score. So a few reminders, it's probably what you see. The scale score is what you need to on that page based on this. Um, we did break this down a little bit by our S2 goals. So if you go to page two, you will notice our goal one in the SU is that average scale score exceeds proficient benchmark in English language arts in each grade by 2025. Um, you will see we are already hitting the mark there in English language arts uh, with kindergarten, uh, first, first grade, grade and then third, third grade, grade. We're, we're really close, close with second grade, um, mm -hmm. and then and some, some of our upper grades, grades, which we'll talk about a little, little bit, bit. Yeah, some insight on that when, when we get going. going. And goal, and goal two, two, similar grade, or similar, similar goal, goal, excuse me, for mathematics, that, that average scale, scale score meets proficient benchmark in mathematics uh, in each grade by 2025, and you will see that that is happening K through three, 
during this testing window, which is a huge celebration, and we are one point off of the celebration for meeting that. So we are very, very close to meeting that expectation. Um, and then one that I think is very impressive is the percentage of students scoring level one to that red, that first third or ninth percentile. Uh, the goal is that we're reducing that by half in ELIMF by 2025. And so, um, K through six, six in the, in the fall, fall of 2022, 2022, so the first time they used this test tool, 36% of our students, students were, were testing, testing in the red, red or first to third or ninth percentile. Uh, this, this test window, which was January 22% of our students are, so we're, we're dropping, dropping, and then, and then um, in, in the fall, fall from that, the 16%, and now, now we're at 11%. Um, so, so you said, said fall, fall, but it, it says, says winter, winter here. So we're, Sorry, we're comparing. Fall, you're com right, right, you're comparing, comparing fall, so you're comparing, comparing their growth over. Mine says winter. Twenty-three. Oh, oh. So it should be fall. Yep. Okay. Fall twenty-three. Thank you. Um, twenty-two. Fall twenty. Me too. So I, I had, had Christy, Christy print this out for me Friday. So. That's why. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Here, here, do you want to just do that? Yeah. I'll just take, take that, that portion. But you can just hand it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Just take it with me. Okay. It got there. Uh, 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 I couldn't understand that email thread. It makes a little more sense now that you say that. So that was goal three. And then we break this down winter to winter, right? So looking at page three of this report. report. Um, this, this is the rate, rate of students', students annual, annual progress, progress compared, compared to the expectation for each step, step assessed cohort, cohort, meaning it's the same group of students, whether they were in first grade last year or now they're in second grade. Okay. We're following them as they go. Um, we aim for at least an expected rate of progress of 0.7 and higher. Um, and, and obviously the higher means higher rate of growth not for those of our students who are further behind. Mm -hmm. Um, right, right now, now we are hitting that mark, mark in ELA for every grade level, level. And, and sometimes, sometimes expanding. expanding. And, and then, then in, in math, um, you will see our fifth and sixth graders um, didn't make, make as much progress as, as we would like, but we're hitting at KC4. But they're still making progress. They are still, still making progress, and, and I will say, when, when I looked back, back a year ago, they, they didn't make large gains fall to winter, but maybe big gains fall to spring. spring. Mm. So, so it, it, it does, does seem to be a little, um, sometimes, sometimes the curriculum gets tougher, right? right? Yeah, it's, it's harder, harder for them to make those bigger, bigger gains. Make bigger gains. Um, that's, that's not the best thing, thing to focus in on. But, but uh, uh, so, so if we turn to the page four, kind of as I share the exciting thing in, Grades K through six, 51% of our students are either meeting or exceeding the standard in ELA. And in the fall, we were at 38%. So we're making a huge change. So I'm comparing this okay. to this. Just so you know, for the fall. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I like, yeah. appreciate yeah. those numbers. You're adding the blue and the green right. together. Yeah. I'm giving myself a little cheat sheet. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, so we're making great uh, gains in that. And like Bill hinted to, our focal, focal areas in the fall, because, because we can break, break this down, down by skill set, where foundational, foundational skills and vocabulary acquisition and use, or use, excuse me. And so in the fall, 16% of our students were meeting that in foundational skills. 58% of our students are not meeting that. This is a This is a yep. yep. And then, then for vocabulary acquisition and use, 41% of our students were meeting or exceeding it. Exceeding that standard in the fall, and 74% are meeting or exceeding it now. Wow. Excitingly, we had 17 students who were supported by an academic targeted plan in reading. In reading. Uh, after winter, we now support 14 students, and that doesn't seem like a big drop, but some kids who have been receiving reading support since second or third grade that are right. longer. That's, that's really yeah, so that's, that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. And um, if you get, get one, one, that's right. exciting. <laughs> and any game, right? right. right. Uh, our, we're currently in the middle of our data teams, digging into this a little bit more. This was supposed to be a focal point of that ice day we had in January, or is that in the So now, so now we're, we're chunked out a little bit. But our focal, focal points point now, based on the data, data are around knowledge, knowledge and language, language and reading informational text for understanding. Okay. 
I will, I will say, say a couple, couple things. things. This read is an interesting cohort when you look, look at them academically or when you look at their um, proficiency levels. Uh, you can, you can, when, when you look, look at that, that there's, there's more complex text for the first time in the assessment, assessment. Mm -hmm. and comprehension specific, specific to informational text and literature. Of the students, students that percentage, that 47% that are in yellow, half of them are meaning the national. So they're in that 50, okay. 50 to 60. Right. Right. Not to the 60th. So they're not to our standard, but we're also not like on, at 40th percentile either. So there's some range to work with that. Um, we're also this Friday working on um, another training with Dibbles for some progress monitoring tools to work on our rate and accuracy and fluency, which will help overlap with using direct instruction tools to monitor progress as well. So it's time to up the ante a little bit, okay. so to speak, for that age group specifically. Questions about ELA? Really like the best. Best. <laughs> we have, have a, a very, very strong community. Very. That's exciting. exciting. It, it is exciting. Is exciting. Yeah, we're doing a great job. Both for ELA and math. Mm -hmm. um, you, look you look at the, at the top, top of the page, page and you, you look, look at, at the, the amount, amount of red, red in each. Mm. It's getting smaller. And, uh, um, it's, it's getting, getting smaller, smaller, but it's, to me it shows that we're, it's, it's working, working with our youngest kids. Right. And then and they, they have, have the benefit of being proficient as they, they go, go to the next grade. grade. Right. Right. Um, the, the kids that are still struggling the most are older students that might not have had the, the curriculum, curriculum and teaching, teaching the professional, professional development, and everything <laughs> else. They haven't had um, consistent implementation and programming. Okay. There are cohorts that, that did, did not exist, exist for K-3. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it gives me, not only is this impressive, but the trend line is as the kids are proficient as they get older, they'll keep that proficiently and hopefully even become more proficient. Right. So um, I found that very heartening. Um, it's a very good point to bring up, Bill. It's yeah. a very good point to think and about. It, and mm -hmm. probably the largest celebration is our students who are service, who receive supports from an IEP, an individualized yes. education plan. Their average rate of progress is exceeding the average for the whole school and oh. exceeding the um, 0.7. In English language arts, they're at 1.41. That's great. Yeah. And then in math, they are at 1.01. .01. So they've made the largest gains. That's which is great news. Um, so in math, we now have 62% of our students meeting or exceeding the standards in That's math. That's exciting. It's oh, very yeah. exciting. Um, in the fall, we focused on operations and algebraic thinking. We're going to continue to build on that, but also now focus on operations and base 10. And a lot of that comes into um, automaticity or fluency, understanding um, when a problem says difference that you need to subtract, as well as not always starting at 1 to do 5 plus 8, right? Like starting at 5, counting on those things. And so our adjustments right now um, is instructionally is actually building in some of that when you're in transition. So a great example is here in Rochester, our second and third grade teacher, as kids finish washing their hands and are lining up for lunch from recess, every day that I'm here, I hear her say, and we're going to start at 68. And then she'll look at the first kiddo in line and she'll say, and what number, how much are we going to count by? And they'll pick anything from one is not a choice. <laughs> so two to, you know, five. And she'll talk about, will it be even or odd? And then she'll go down the line of 20 students, and they all count on. And that's how they go to lunch. Nice. So we're looking at ways to build that in. Yes. Where it's not with a manipulative. It's not on our fingers. Um, Absolutely. Our school day. It's very cool to listen to. Yeah. I think that's neat. Yeah. So uh, any other questions? Lots of celebrations. Absolutely. Um, 
the first page about in the column in the far right, minimum growth mm -hmm. from fall to winter expected. Is that from track my progress ex expectations or somehow there's a, they, they've talked about common core state standards um, here. Yeah. And so, because in some ways you, I read that and then I looked at the results and they weren't as glowing as when we looked at the, right. the rest. So, uh, so your are there two is, different does measurements this or come from help me there? Track my progress. Minimum yeah. growth from fall to winter is the minimum increase in a scale score that students in each grade level need to achieve to maintain expectations in their grade level. So if they were already at this number, they would only need to make a scaled score gain of 41 points to stay within. Oh, okay. Does that make more sense? Yep. yep, okay. yep, yep. And this comes from Track My Progress? I believe so, yep. yes. Okay, gotcha. Thank I you. don't know any yes. other. How are the teachers doing? What's their mood on all of this? They've got the test results, and I'm sure they're just bouncing around with some of the successes, and at the same time, maybe frustrated that not every kid and all the work is not yet paying off. What's, give us a little um, sense of, of um, mm -hmm. mood and whether or not um, they, they, the core to me is that they believe in the curriculum, uh, the guidance, right. the feedback, the, the assistance so that they can succeed and the kids can succeed. Right. Um, I would say they are perfectionists, which I appreciate, especially yes. in this particular area. No one's willing to waver with what we're doing curriculum wise, which is great. Wow. Um, but they also know that there's kiddos in here who could do better than what they showed us on that test. So figuring out how to leverage that with those kiddos is, is a big conversation. I think, wow. I so. heard, here, no, it wasn't hearsay, but somebody was talking about a, a kid that was way behind. And for mm -hmm. the first time, and I think in her uh, elementary school life, she's now proficient or beyond proficient or something yeah. like that. And there was just off the wall. Levels. And I'm thinking about if I was her or I was thinking uh, her parents um, or even her friends being proud of her that just talk about a gift like that, that um, keep could keep on going and totally transform her life. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Very nice, thank you. Uh, Patrick or JC, do you have any questions on the um, academic report? Oh. No, I don't. It was great. I love it. All right. It's uh, very accessible, so I think it's a really great tool for us. Excellent. Cool, so. All right, thank you. Okay, we have. Uh, Jamie back, we had gotten to 9.1. Shall we circle back to, do we have, don't have Tara back yet. 7.5? Yeah. Uh, so the, um, so the, the reports to the board in regards to the sale of the, of the high school is, um, that the select board indicated, this town of Rochester select board, indicated at their last meeting that they were going to be moving forward to hold a special vote in Rochester for the citizens to vote on um, whether or not they you know, supported the notion of the town of Rochester purchasing the high school building. I would say that there, there's the Rochester repurposing committee that was formed by the town. Um, that group of folks have now moved forward in regards to being uh, a nonprofit, which is one of the things that the Rochester Select Board had um, inquired about them pursuing. Um, and th that's pretty much all wrapped up in regards to the, their ability to move to you know move forward with supporting uh, the town of Rochester uh, if there's a successful. Um, vote this spring and that the buildings acquired by the town of Rochester, this group would then help um, essentially move forward in the next steps of renovating the building and working to move forward in regards to um, leasing spaces and oversee all that work, which I think is really excited. That wouldn't ju just fall on the town select board to manage. Um, 
In addition to that, um, Bernie Sanders, uh, out of Senate appropriations, there is just over $2 million that's been appropriated federally for the town of Rochester to, um, to be able to tend to some of that deferred maintenance of that building. Um, and that's one of the reasons the stipulations around those federal funds um, is that we need to have uh, a clean uh, brownfield assessment for the state. And so we received a letter which I had forwarded to the board that said that that was completed. Like anything right now, I feel like uh, in state <laughs> government, uh, that goalpost has moved a little bit in regards to arsenic levels. And so we're gonna need to do some more sampling, uh, Two Rivers will, um, on some ground soil because our arsenic level was fine at the current threshold, but they're gonna uh, change the threshold. <laughs> so uh, we can't get that signed off clean uh, brownfield. We just found this out actually on Thursday um, mm -hmm. until that's done. They're moving forward on doing that sampling ASAP and they expect that within 30 days after the sampling that we'll get a signed off finalized brownfield, which you saw in the letter. We already have the letter, but it pens for 30 days in case changes occur. Changes occurred to what their those arsenic level requirements are going to be. We're feeling good still um, in regards to having that finalized uh, clearance in regards to Brownfield, um, which is often a requirement in order to um, access a lot of this federal funding mm -hmm. uh, in different grants. They're also that group's working on um, some additional uh, funds to help. Uh, with the Rochester High School that they're feeling really optimistic about in regards to funding. Um, and you may say, well, what's with the Sanders money? It is actually already out of appropriations. So it's really about um, whether or not um, our government in D.C. takes up an actual new budget. Uh, the feeling is that if a new budget is uh, reconciled between the House and the Senate, that indeed that funding, that funding, like I said, is, is part of the budget that's come out of wow. appropriations in the Senate. So, um, you know, whether the House looks into that and says, oh, that two point so million in Rochester is not OK. I mean, that I don't believe that's typically how they go about those budget reconciliation between the two branches of government looking at it like that. But so I feel pretty good about it, that that Great. money will come through. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about with the sale of the Rochester High School, it's my recommendation um, and our attorneys and when I met with um, Vic and Catherine as the spokespeople um, for the repurposing committee that we move forward with um, finalizing a bill of sale with the town of Rochester, a purchase and sale agreement um, that would indicate that all the provisions, meaning provision of um, they would take on full ownership July 1, 2025, which is what I just mentioned prior to you, upon a successful uh, vote of the town. And our legal feels very confident that that would be a fine thing to put together mm -hmm. and then uh, bring to the select board. And I actually think it will really help um, the residents of Rochester clearly understand what this, you know, um, agreement is in regards to the town taking on ownership of the building, that it's all specified and laid out. So unless there's an objection by the board, I wanted to move forward with getting that taken care of here in the next month um, to be, then be able to um, join the select board uh, here within the next month or so to provide them that draft of a purchase and sale agreement. I like the idea. I think that would be very helpful for all, all parties to just kind of clearly lay out what uh, the expectations are for each of the of the parties, um, and it does it gives clear dates in it. Um, my question is, with this additional testing that needs to be done, have they moved the date of the potential vote? Not yet. There's still okay. a sense that we may actually be able to get that taken care of prior to that 30th. So there's not been a t t there has not been a discussion of moving the vote. Uh, yet. Okay. Um, uh, comments from the other board members about uh, us 
pursuing um, creating a purchase and sales agreement for the town of Rochester. Will we get to look at the purchase and like, will we get to see it? Yeah. Yep. I'm just curious, especially because people will be asking. What we would do is I'd ask, uh, based on the conversation we just had, um, that David Rue would put that together and then we'll share it with the board. Okay, that sounds good to me. Great. I like it. Sounds, sounds good. Okay. Um, do we have tarot? We can circle back to 7.2, our audit. So I sent you all your fiscal year 23. So I sent you all your fiscal year 23 audit and included in that um, my overview memo of the high points of the audit. Most important being that there were no findings. Good job, Tara. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So team effort. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> Good team. So <laughs> So if there's any specific questions, we can go over them or if anyone wants to sit down and go through the audit in detail, I'm happy to do that. I have to say, I love the new format of the audit. I found them much easier to read in comparison to our prior audits. Um, with the pertinent information being in the front of the audit versus buried, you know, in the last pages of it. So I definitely like the new format um, in comparison to what we've had prior to this. So it was definitely, and the entire overall audit experience has been much different um, in this course. So it's been great. Yeah, I say it every year, but I'll say it again that in my experience over, <laughs> I won't. Uh, reveal how many years of dealing with auditors in, 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 in local government. And, uh, and inevitably, they'd come back with questions and issues. And they'd get more nitpicking as we went on. And my hair got more and more gray to silver <laughs> to whatever the case is. So for us to kind of go, nice going, when that's not necessarily the norm, and um, my sense is I've never been an auditor, but I think they're trained to find something. And so, um, and for another clean audit uh, is really an accomplishment. Um, and it's not something to be a, we, we expect it, but you can't always just assume it's gonna happen. Um, and uh, so again, uh, Tara, to you and your team, congratulations. Thank you. And if there isn't any questions, the action item would be for you to just accept your fiscal year 23 audit. I make a motion to accept our fiscal year 23 audit as presented. I second that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you, Tara. Thank, Thank you, you all very, very much. much. Okay, um, I think we've finalized everything in seven. Uh, we've done eight. Uh, so 9.2, the endowment committee. Uh, the endowment committee has been um, meeting about uh, once a month uh, and we're making some good headway, which is, is really nice. Um, so the um, there's a fund called the Cowdery Fund that currently resides in a um, very low earning CD. Um, and the Cowdery Fund is not accessible to us yet because it needs to reach a level of maturity before we can provide scholarships out of it. Uh, but the endowment committee would like to recommend to the board that we move this Cowdery CD from its low bearing CD at Mascoma to Northfield Savings Bank to a CD that has terms no greater than 18 months and with the highest available interest rate. Can I move that? Yes, it would. Yeah. if somebody would like to move it, that would be great. That, that, that is the endowment's recommendation to the board, and we would need the board to make a formal uh, vote on, on such a, a uh, thing. 
So I move. All right, Bill has moved. Do I have a second? Second. Great. Is there any discussion? Great. All in favor, say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Okay. The other thing that um, we have dove into is that one of our endowments, it is a scholarship fund that was um, given to the uh, Rochester High School Scholarship Fund given in memory of um, uh, Lena Ellis Wing by her daughter, uh, Beryl Wing. Um, so she, uh, or I guess Beryl, uh, Lena Ellis Wing graduated the class of 1899. So that was kind of, that's pretty cool. Um, so it's a trust for scholarships and the wording is to members of the graduating class of Rochester High School. Um, this specific language prohibits the trust from being used now, um, as we know why. Uh, but we feel the intention of Barrel Wing was to provide scholarships to our local students. And to do that, we need to petition the court to modify the language um, and we would like to use our SU lawyer, um, Barra Smith of Sch Schnitzel, Page, and Fletcher. Wow. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um, to to take this um, to to take this to uh, probate court to try to modify the language. Um, and again, that is a motion that we would need to ask the board. Uh, if they if they would like to move that so I was looking for the board to make a motion to move forward with bringing a petition to probate court to modify the wing scholarship language I shall move moved do it D does it really need to be changed e yeah. yes it does we've we've uh, contacted um, our lawyer and we've actually I think had a couple of lawyers read through this the the language of the will specifically states um, safely invested in income only expended annually for scholarships to members of the graduating class of rochester high school recipients to be chosen by faculty of said high school high school students right so because we do not have rochester graduates of rochester high school yeah so um so we need to have the language modified to be able to ex have this of scholarship money accessible and again the endowment committee feels that it was the intention of the of Beryl Wing who created this that she wanted to support the education of the kids in the valley the the local students um, so we have a motion to move forward with bringing this petition to probate court do I have a second second excellent any further discussion all right, all in favor, say aye. 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 Excellent, thank you. So um, the, uh, the court will decide, um, where's my notes from last meeting? Um, so the judge will, will look at it and, and um, look at the wording and try to discern what the initial intention of this uh, will was and to be able to modify the language in a way that the, the court feels follows that intention. Uh, the endowment committee has thought of what we would like to recommend as changing of wording. Um, and I don't know if we're gonna be able, if that is gonna be able to come to fruition or not. Uh, but I would like to pass that in front of the board as well so that we can um, advise our attorney that, that um, these are uh, our intention for how we would like to see the language changed. And so what we'd like to have it changed to is that um, instead of the graduating uh, the uh, graduating class of Rochester High School, we would like to change it to um, graduating seniors from the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Because as we know, when the high school was 
here we had students from Stockbridge that would come mm -hmm. and graduate from Rochester High School. And so that would, the intention would be that essentially any, any senior that our district, that we're paying for their tuition in our budget for their senior year, this scholarship they could apply for to and it would be available to them. Um, and the other part of it is to be chosen by the faculty of said high school, and we'd like to change it to chosen by the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Scholarship Committee, which is established. And if this comes to fruition, um, well, actually, either way, we're going to look at the makeup of that scholarship committee. Um, so. We're kind of in the early stages, maybe with, with the actual language, and it does need to go to court, but I wanted to put that in front of you guys um, to get your thoughts and um, see if you wanted to, to make a motion that you would, would recommend that to our lawyer. I'll move that we recommend, uh, as Amy indicated, those two uh, guiding principles to our attorney to um, utilize and promote in the probate. Uh, process. Do I have a second? A second. Yeah. Ex excellent. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's exciting work to that we're like moving forward in this this endowment committee. So. Nice going. Okay. All uh, right, last but not least, the Capital Reserve Fund request. So we are wrapping up the final invoicing for EEI. And so I come to you this evening for a request for the remaining balance that was going to be used utilizing your reserve funds, which remains at 179000 $257.75. So we can do this in a couple of ways. Um, in your Rochester Capital Improvement Fund, there is a balance of $13,883.07. In your Stockbridge Capital, Capital Improvement and Maintenance of Facilities Fund, you have $64,101.53. And in your Rochester Stockbridge Capital Improvements and Maintenance of Facility Funds, there's 168,650. In case anybody wants to write those numbers down, I'm giving you a second. Otherwise, my recommendation would be you could utilize your balances remaining in your Rochester and Stockbridge funds and then what's left comes out of the combined fund and then you're funding the combined fund moving forward. Thoughts, comments? Um, do we need to, how soon do we need to do this, uh, Tara? If not tonight, I would need it by the next board meeting because EEI obviously wants their funds. Mm -hmm. Which is when you made the agreement with EEI, this is the figure they provided us. This was right. A, this is this is not a new figure. This is this is what part of that project was. It's just figuring out how you want to pay for it. And the amount again is Tara. One hundred seventy-nine thousand two hundred fifty-seven dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> I love the seventy-five cents, right? I mean, my 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 recommendation is to consider um, going ahead and closing out those two funds because we talked about not continuing to fund those. That you would fund a right. joint fund, okay. and so I think you know whether the board takes action tonight or next month to strongly consider the idea of doing that because, um, you know, we've got this, your surplus funds and stuff would continue to go to that one capital facilities fund moving forward. And it would um, keep a balance, it, we would continue to have a balance in that, um, the Rochester Stockbridge 
capital right. fund if we did it in this way. Yeah, it gives us more flexibility too. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll make a motion that we use um, the individual, the Rochester uh, Capital Reserve Fund and the Stockbridge Capital Reserve Fund to end the rest to be taken out of the Unified District's Capital Reserve Fund to pay EEI for our building improvements. I second that. Okay, we've got a motion it's made and seconded. Is there a comment or further discussion? You are muted, Patrick. Thank you. Approximately how much would be left in the joint fund after? About 64,000 maybe, right? Maybe a little less. 67,377. Oh, I was okay. Very close, Amy. Nicely done. <clears throat> and then what we had, we put in for another 60,000 in our budget this year. That's, that's correct. That's including the 65 that's in your FY24 budget. So what's in your FY25 budget for reserve would help build that back up. Okay. And, 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 then we have a surf, and then we have a surplus now that we have to decide what to do with. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, it's 65, just so you know, Patrick, 65,000. 65, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I would definitely like to see with the surplus, you know, that, that we at least get it to where, where we were, at least the joint, the joint account. I don't really, you know, there's a, there's a lot that needs to be done. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a motion on the floor. If there's no further comment. Call the vote. All right. All in favor? Same five by saying aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Do we have any new hires or resignations? We do not. Great. Do we have any public comment? Uh, hi, it's Keith. I, hi, it's Keith. I have a, qu a couple of questions. Okay, go ahead. Okay, first, I'd like to acknowledge all of the hard work and effort both the uh, teachers, administration, and the board uh, puts towards the school district. Much appreciated. Um, my first question is with respect to the taxes and to the sustainability and how the board views uh, increases discounting Act 127 and the 5% cap uh, of increases of just under 9% to just under 27% at the high end. Um, and it's not just a question for our district, but it's small districts throughout rural Vermont. Um, I just don't see the sustainability um, in having taxpayers bear such a burden Are there any thoughts for how the district looks at this and the board looks at this? Go ahead. I, I mean, Keith, one thing that the board uh, directed the administration to do tonight is to actually come back with a 0% increase on the equalized tax rate, which means that the rest of the contributing factors to increase taxes is the drop in common level of appraisal. Um, the actual, yeah, and I, so whether you operated a school or not, those tax increases would be occurring. And I appreciate that, that comment. However, it still puts a burden on the residents of these two small towns. Um, and I think it's difficult for many individuals to bear that burden. Um, and I appreciate the fact that, you know, everybody looks to the CLA and says it's due to the CLA. Um, as a major factor in that increase. But the reality is the taxpayers still bear the brunt of that. And I think it's a very difficult situation. I mean, 
sustainability of moving that forward. If every year we're faced with the same thing as taxpayers, at what point is it bankrupt? Um, I have a question um, uh, about this too. Um, if there was no school, the the children in the in the district would still be going somewhere, right? So yes, we we still are responsible for um, educating the students, paying for their education, whether it's um, in a uh, location that we have housed or if it's sending them to another um, building. I, yeah, I guess my question for Keith was, um, w what are you what are you proposing to well, avoid that? Well, I guess I guess you know. My thought would be that if you have more children in a, under a single umbrella, the costs are definitely uh, spread out over a greater number. Just as you try to, or just as we try to, increase the number of students that come into our district to help defer costs, the same would be true if we were part of a larger district. Am I incorrect in that concept? Not sure he's asking. Sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, I, I think what he's saying is if we were to merge with multiple townships, just as White River Valley High School did. Am I correct, Keith? Well, that's the concept because, again, you'd have more students and more taxpayers sharing in the pie and splitting the pie up. So, and I'm not pointing a finger at RSUD, I'm just talk, speaking in general to the um, entire rural districts within the state of Vermont. It's becoming an issue that I think needs to be addressed. I mean, you have to look to the future. You can't just say, we're doing this today, but what about five years from now? If we have to put up with increases of six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent run the numbers. It's very difficult for small districts to continue to do that. I hear what you're saying. Um, at, at this time, uh, both of our communities value having um, a school in their, in their town and um, until the point that um, the community really speaks differently to that effect. Um, we are going to continue with with this model, uh, but I definitely I hear and understand what you're saying. Uh, the cost of education, uh, the cost of everything, just continues to rise, um, and it really it really has to do with what the community values for their students and the education of them. Thank you for your okay, question. Well, I have two follow I have two follow up yep. questions. One is the cost of education when you look at these budgets far exceeds the current rate of inflation. I think that no one would disagree with that statement. Um, my second point would be in an effort to be very transparent to the constituents of our community, would it make sense for the board when they publish their uh, vote for this budget that they would say, we're increasing your tax rate from X in the prior year to X plus this percentage in this current year. So if it was transparent enough for people to see that we're going to increase your tax rate anywhere from 8% to 25%, I think that the constituents would view it very differently. Would the board consider something that along those lines so it would be more transparent to the average voter? Uh, well, our, when we do publish our book, we do publish the tax rates from the previous year to the current year. Um, and as we discussed tonight, we are um, coming back with a budget that we are not increasing the tax rate at all. The equalized, the equalized tax rate. Okay, so you're saying to me that you would say that my tax rate, if last year it was a dollar, that this year it's still going to be a dollar? The equalized tax rate. So, so I, um, no, 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 no. See, 
but you're not but you're not being transparent i hear i think that so so keith and i'm happy to schedule a time with you but our tax sheets very clearly say what the homestead tax rate changes so in rochester it, we will will be able to put a percentage on what the tax rate increase changes and, and one of the budget drafts we looked at tonight that difference was 14.61 percent and that it clearly says that on the tax rate and in stockbridge it's 8.86 percent and that is absolutely what we will be publishing and communicating during our presentations okay so you'll make those numbers very clear and transparent. You're going to say your tax rate is going to go up 14.61% in Rochester and 8.86% in Stockbridge. Well, when they are finalized, we are definitely going to to um, be transparent and um, educate and and uh, t put out all these numbers so that people can understand just what they are looking at and what they are voting for letting them know what the increase is from last year and why and uh it will be in the in the book that gets sent out we usually send out uh, a, a clear um dialogue there as well but yes when we have the final numbers what we are talking about tonight we have not voted on this budget yet um but we so we are still working through it but those numbers will definitely be um, clearly represented. Okay, because, you know, I speak to a lot of people in my neighborhood, and, and it seems that, you know, a lot of people who have mortgages, that they don't really realize the increase until they get it because they're escrowing their taxes. And, you know, I see my tax bill come in, and I'm like, really? And this is, you know, it's quite a shock. Yes. To see these types of numbers being presented, um, you know, and as I said, I, I don't I don't discount all of the hard work and effort that the people within this district and the individuals who run the school put forth. I'm just looking at the bigger picture and I look at the rural districts within Vermont and how this is su sustainable. And that's really my point. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I, no more, um, there's no other public comment. So our next meeting is going to be Monday, March 4th, and that's going to be at the Stockbridge campus. Um, is there any future agenda items that we need to write down now? Um, you can always email me and Jamie as we're going. I just had the annual mailer in me. Oh, yes, the homework for the annual mailer to yeah. look at it and to be able to come back and give Lindy um, some clear direction on maybe. And the mission statement. And, our, and the mission statement. We're going to um, provide uh, JC with um, some of our recommendations, and um, she'll uh, come together with um, something for next meeting. And... Yep, that then was, I won't be here. yep, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to just Oh, say. okay. Yep. Yeah, so, we're going to be presenting town budgets that night. Oh, that's true, yeah. A, you're going to have your budget, too, don't forget, as a future okay. agenda yep. item. Um, yep, and then Monday, March 4th, not a good night um, in the sense of we'll, yeah. be, we'll be at three other district meetings. But the... The prior week's actually quite tight. I would prefer not to go that prior week. Um, Jihad did warn theirs for that prior Monday, so if a Monday works, I'm fine with doubling up because we're going to be out anyways. But Seems like you're going to have a lot that you're ready, getting prepared for, though, if you do haven't. Yeah. Why don't we look at after the That's fourth? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there, I, do you have a certain day that is better? Uh, that following week should be... Uh, Monday should be open. I think Mondays are better for you guys. Is, is Monday the 11th um, a time that's available for you, Patrick, and you, JC? It seems fine to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm flexible. Okay, great. Well, we'll move that to Thank March you. 11th then at 6 o'clock at the Stockbridge campus. Yep. Excellent. 
sorry, we're, it's 8.19, but we really had a pretty full agenda tonight, so. <laughs> My track record of two hours is out the oh, window, but it's boy. only by 19 minutes. And like I said, we had a lot of real important things to, to, to discuss and go over and, and, and listen to. So um, if there's no further business, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So move. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Aye. Aye and bye. bye. <laughs>